Saturday Morning Live last summer. When she chose the engaging humor path, she had no idea how difficult it would be to find comedic topics in a time of pandemic, racial unrest, sedition, economic collapse. Opting for self-deprecation, Jackie will tell us about being clueless in situations seemingly familiar to everyone else. Please welcome Jackie Olson with her speech, How Did I Not Know That? Jackie. When I was four years old, I was allowed to go visit my grandparents by myself. My grandparents lived one block away, so I had to cross one street. My older sister, who was six, was designated as the person who would do my crossing the street orientation. We walked down the sidewalk, we got to the corner, Kathy said, do you see any cars? She quickly answered, nope, there are no cars, and we crossed the street. We lived in Shakopee. It was a little farm town at that time. There wasn't much traffic. With this orientation behind me, I was allowed to visit my grandparents on my own, but frequently it's a small town. The neighbors were out and about, and whether it was the teenage girls who lived across the street or the old woman down at the corner or that the two old couples who lived in the duplex they were so sweet everybody was making sure that Jackie got across the street safely so someone would always step up and say oh we gotta stop at the corner do you see any cars and I would never answer and they would say no no cars we can go across the street and I was so confused because every time, every single time I saw cars, they would say, are there any cars? And I'd start to say, me. And they would say, no, there are no cars. And I don't know how long this went on before I realized parked cars don't count. I would see a blue car and a white car and whoever was with me would say, nope, there are no cars. Now, my, when you think about it, my understanding was that you don't run into the street because mother told me you don't run into the street. But I knew from painful personal experience that you don't run into the street because if you trip, you skin both knees and the heels of both your hands really badly. That's why you don't run into the street. The fact that I didn't understand that when I looked for cars, I was supposed to ignore parked cars. That means I missed the whole idea that you stop and look for cars because you want to avoid impact with a moving vehicle. Now, if someone had just once said, do you see any cars coming? I might've caught on to this much sooner. But on the other hand, how did I not know that? I want you to know that I did master the concept. I got good at crossing the street. And even by the time I was 11, I became a school crossing guard. Oh yeah, I got good at it. Many, many years later, I married a sports nut. Ed loves sports. He loves basketball and football and baseball. He played them all. He's an avid golfer. Every year about this time, he would start to talk about the NCAA championship, or as I call it, the NACA. He would call, he would talk about the sports, the various teams. He just got into March Madness and Every year he would talk about UConn and he would say, UConn's the best and they've got this. And he talked about El Khalid who went to school right here in Minneapolis North and was only 5'10", but he won a championship with UConn. And I would be so confused, um, UConn, really? And he'd say, oh yeah, UConn is a powerhouse, both the men's and women's teams every year. And I just, it didn't make sense to me that UConn would be this way. 
But I don't want you to think I thought about it a lot because I really didn't. But every year we'd have this same conversation and, and we talk about this elite athlete and that one from Yukon. And it wasn't until maybe 10 years later, I sat down and watched a game with Ed. Yukon, it turns out, is short for the University of Connecticut, not Yukon College, a little college up in the Canadian hinterlands. Duh, I, uh, on the one hand, I was right. Yukon didn't attract the most elite athletes from all over the US. But on the other hand, how did I not know that? My father, bless his heart, started cooking at age 80 when my mother no longer could. He had heard that you just take whatever's in your refrigerator and you can mix it up and make a wonderful stew or soup. He didn't seem to be aware that these were experienced cooks who could do this, who knew about spices. And he would regularly chop up about 11 onions and put them into a stew. You learn very quickly that no matter how hungry you were, when you were visiting dad, you said, oh no, I just ate, but thanks, that smells really interesting. He was a little bit clueless too. I think a lot of us have, uh, I don't know, holes in our experience, unmistake, uh, mysterious gaps in our knowledge or our education. I remember overhearing my sister-in-law tell my daughter that she didn't want to go to the North Pole to see Santa Claus. She would like to go to the South Pole where it's nice and warm. And I thought, really? You're a college graduate. But the, the most interesting knowledge gap that I've heard of is by a singer named Cher. You've heard of Cher. She has done all right for herself. She is pretty, pretty capable. Yet Cher talks about how she was an adult before someone told her that Mount Rushmore is not, in fact, a natural phenomenon. I thought that that one takes the cake. Mr. Toastmaster. Thank you, Jackie. Once again, I'd ask for one minute.